Hello there. This is Luhall.com coming back at you live, just giving you some um, good information. I wanted to just share some things with you uh, as far as business and some other areas and avenues of uh, your uh, movements uh, heading towards being an entrepreneurship. You know, one of the things that is really something you got to be aware of while you're moving forward into becoming an entrepreneur is people who are going to negatively uh, come in front of you and say things that are going to discourage you of being an entrepreneur or being an inventor or anything that it is that you feel that is going to involve you moving on to doing something that you enjoy. Most people, a good percentage of people, have no clue of what it takes to be a business person, to be an inventor, uh, as we say, an entrepreneur. And when they challenge you with their negativity and you feed into it, they feel that um, they are doing something that is right to them. But when you are uh, that type of individual that doesn't pay them any mind, who really just focus on uh, where I'm going, what I'm doing, and how I'm going to get there, and knowing how to eliminate them safely and properly, because a lot of times it's, it's the ignorance of not knowing um, what they're doing because they're so used to doing it. But with you moving forward and making strides in what you're doing, it helps them to be believe something differently when they see that whatever they have said negatively has not affected you. Um, I have people come to me sometimes, and in business they'll say to me, uh, "You know, you don't want to do that. Um, that that that's not why you want to why you want to do that, or or that's not making any money. Um, you know, or you know these people are not going to let you into the business, or that particular industry is really going down the drain, and we're not making no money out here anymore doing that. Or I was in there for 15 years, and I was in it for 10 years, and." And I just got tired of business, you know, uh, workman's compensation, liability insurance, all these things, the taxes, everything is just destroying me. And I couldn't uh, really maintain the business any longer because it was just too much. Well, I'm here to tell you this. I am a businessman that believes in organization. I believe that whatever you want to do, whatever you're going to do, you have to maintain consistency. You have to maintain accountability. Uh, you have to maintain the honesty. And you have to maintain the dedication to the entrepreneurship, entrepreneurship world in a whole. Know that all these things are things that are included in business. So in a, on a financial end, you must prepare by having a good tax guy. You must prepare by making sure that you do your business uh, homework every day. You must prepare to know that your pricing structure may vary or may have to increase based on where you are, who you're dealing with. There's so many things involved. So when I hear people come up with negative stories, I don't really pay them any mind. I have to listen and hear them because they're speaking, but I don't have to pay them any mind. Um, I, I encourage everyone to know that the biggest part about business, one of the best parts about business is being able to make the mistakes. And from those mistakes, you learn. That is your college of education. That is your college of wisdom. And with that, you can grow. With that, you know not to do that again. And if it does happen again, you know how to recover. Don't be afraid to slip and slide. Don't be afraid to fall. Don't be afraid as they, they call it fail, but it's not really fail. That's not what you call it. It is called don't be afraid to learn. Everything has a learning curve, no matter how great you are, how powerful you are. Someone once said to me that with all the success and with all the goodness that you have, it is only going to be measured by how you overcame all the shortcomings beforehand. When it is given to you, there is no appreciation, so it's difficult for you to understand that. But when you have earned it, when you have put your sweat and tears into it, when you have seek, seeked out mentorship, when you have educated yourself by reading, when you have educated yourself by staying up late, when you have educated yourself by looking at other people's 
uh, travels, when you've educated yourself by paying attention to the good, by paying attention to the bad, then you would understand that whatever people can say to you that is negative, not that you should totally disregard it, but you got to look at it and say, there's another way. I know when I was in business, uh, before this business, and I was in corporate America, I used to tell everyone, I understand you love talking about people. I understand you love coming to people. And, and this is in corporate America and telling them what they didn't do or what they should have done. But why don't we reverse that? Why don't you come to people and talk positive? Why don't you, instead of you saying all the negative things that they have done, let's talk about all the positive things that they are doing and let's enhance those. I never believed when you were in corporate America that writing people up made any sense at all. Never made any sense at all when you go to somebody, well, here, I'm going to write you up because you did. I, I, I think that is so idiotic. When you are a leader, you don't have to put yourself in a position to write people up. When you know people's strengths and when you know people's weaknesses, you use those strengths and weaknesses to the advantage of where you are. When you write people up for their shortcomings, that's because the leader that has been put in place has not probably and completely done their job correctly. We write people up because it is an easy way for us to track the dismissal of that individual. That means that we are concentrating more on the dismissal than the attendance of keeping them. You wanna make sure that as a leader, you show people how to become you. As a manager, you show people you. That's it. You want them to become you, not to you, to just be you. Like you don't want them to do as I say. No, you want them to come to you. First of all, you want them to aspire to be above you and keep going. But it is important for you to know as a leader, you cannot develop progress. You cannot develop anything until you have done the proper things in your path to prepare yourself for the proper communication, for the proper development, for the, for the proper uh, organization inside of what you're putting together. When you are concentrating more on how to discipline your employees, then you are losing many steps in growing a business. A lot of your employees, or a lot of your people around you, have great ideals and they have great information. And you need to incorporate that. There are so many businesses, there are so many people, there are so many situations where people are still practicing old ways. There are people still practicing old habits. They still want you to wear suit and ties. They want you to dress a certain way. There's so many old habits that have nothing to do with business. It's because a system says you got to wear a suit and tie, an old English way or whatever way they have. Or you got to wear a hat. You got to look this way. Why? The information has nothing to do with the attire. People say, yeah, but it looks good. There we go. It looks good. Understand something. People buy you. They don't buy what you have. They don't buy what you got or what you can get. People buy you. You can be the best salesperson in the world. You can have the best equipment in the world. But when you are as a person, it's not in a invitation. It, it, you don't have that invitation. You're not inviting. They're not going to buy from you. I can have a little bit of everything and be the nicest person and genuine. And I could sell more than you could ever sell because people don't care about my product as much as they care about the person that they're buying it from. It is about building the relationship. And that's important. They can care less if I have a suit and tie on. They can care less if I have shorts on. They can care less if I'm standing in a dashiki. That is not important to them. But we already know here in America, which is one of the most negative things, everything is judged by your color as when it comes down to certain things. So even if you were dressed nice and you are not the race that they respect, of course, people use that as a crutch to eliminate you. But we're going to go past that. And for those who appreciate business, 
and appreciate what they have. You buy the person. You ever walk into a place and you meet a, a person and they are very nice, very nice. When you walk out there, you say, you know what? Wow, I like her. Do you ever meet the other person? You go in, you know what you want to get. You know exactly what you want to get. And when you walk in there and you meet that person at the front and they give you a negative experience, you leave out of there and you say, you know what? I'm buying that crap from them. Forget about that. I didn't want to spend my money with them. So you go back to the person that you had the great experience with. And I don't care if it was $10, $15, $20 more. You're not buying the product. It's not important to you. You are buying the relationship, the treatment that you have. And that's why I said we have so many still structures in corporate America. They want you to, to look a certain way. They want you to dress a certain way. They want you to be a certain way. But ultimately, no one's really buying that. So in my company, I make sure that my team understands that. People are buying us. We present ourselves properly. We come to the customer and let the customer understand that they are part of us, that we care. Then we worry about the service. Then the service follows behind the individuals who've presented themselves. And that is very, very important for you to understand when it comes down to dealing with people. When we judge people based on some of the things that we have, we got to really look at and see what are we judging, judging them on? The number one thing should be the personality, the character. I picked up the phone before and I've called people and I say, hello, how are you? And you know what they say to me? How can I help you? I, I hate that. I, I, I don't even like doing business with them after that. When I pick up the phone and I call you and I say, hello, good morning, how are you? And you go, hey, I'm doing fine, how are you? Now, we build a relationship because you are now paying attention. Someone said to me, hearing and listening are two different things. When you combine those, they create and they equal listening. So when I say to you, hello, how are you this morning? You go, I'm doing fine. How are you this morning? You have combined the two and now you are paying attention. So now I know who I'm dealing with. So when you speak to someone, always do that. Say, hello, how are you? How's your day today? And if they say, how can I help you, sir? Don't eliminate that. Eliminate that. Go no further. Because the relationship that you demand when spending your money, it's got to be so strong that you are going to get them out of the old habits, the old teachings, the old way of doing things. So that's, how, that's important. That's how you have to look at things. And I demand that when I speak to people. I don't want to deal with you. I called a company back one year. And I said to the lady, the reason why I'm calling back to order what I want to order, because I could have gotten it from a lot of different places, is because of you. She said, oh, thank you so much. You are so sweet. I said, no, you are so sweet and you're so kind. And I said, I never forgot the kindness that you offered me when I spoke with you from the very beginning. He says, well, I hope I've done a great job. I said, well, if I'm talking to you right now and after a year, you've done a fantastic job. Never did she ever lose the relationship with me. Even after she hung up, she says, well, you know what? You have a great day. She remembered my name. She remembered my company. She remembered everything. Well, she went to the computer, but she said, I remember you. That speaks volumes. Now, I may not remember you because my brain is so crazy, but you're always going to get a pleasant greeting from me. And if you ever say to me, hello, how are you doing? How are you? How are you doing? I'm always going to say, I'm doing great. How are you? Because I'm ecstatic to hear someone else ask me that question because that's how I do it. So, folks, you got to understand how important it is if you're going to be in business. Don't listen to the negativity. Always remember the positive. Create a great relationship. 
Try to get away from a lot of your old habits and create your own habits. Create a, new, a better positive experience for people. Let people know who you are. Don't be afraid to give things away. Remember, people teach you how to save. You don't want to save money. You want to spend money in your business to help it grow. If you afraid that there's going to be death in the family, create a burial expense and pay for that. You want to pay the house off, create a house uh, account and pay for that. And use every penny you have to either grow your business, develop, travel, enjoy yourself, eat, enjoy your family, spend your money. Spend your money. You work for it, you spend it. What are you saving it for? If you were to d die tomorrow, that money is just, it's just here. People say, I want to leave the money for my children. No. Then your children will never know how it is to earn, appreciate, and to acknowledge the goodness of hard work. If you want to start funds for them, that's something totally different. You want them to be the owners of your business, you start teaching them now so they can learn to take it over. But do not leave your kids anything that they can't earn. Kids that don't know how to work hard and to appreciate will never ever have the respect. A rich kid can't respect anything. When you give somebody all that, they can't respect. They know nothing about the hard work. They know nothing about it. So I had to make this video because it's been something that's been bothering me for so long and it's longer than other videos that I've made before because I want people to think differently. I want you to understand how things can be done differently. We're stuck in too many old custom ways. If you want to be anything, do it. Become it. Make it a part of who you are. Don't quit your job to be what you want to be. Let your job be your investment to be what you want to be. But dedicate yourself. Become the best at what you want to do. You, it's like getting a loan from the bank. You're going to ask 20 banks. 19 will say no. One will eventually say yes. But it's all based on your efforts, your dedication and commitment to your dream and the drive that you have to put forward to understand that it's going to come with a lot of negative, but it's also going to produce a good amount of positive. Don't be afraid. Don't let anything put fear in your heart when it comes down to your dream. Get a mentor. Talk to people. Don't be afraid to pick up books. Read as many bios as you can. YouTube has so much for you to do, so much work. Dream big, play big, spin big, believe big, and understand a lot. Now, my final piece, always pay it forward and demand whoever you to pay it forward to, tell them to make sure they pay it forward as well. Grow, develop, change lives, feed information, and become the best leader, the best leader that you can be. That's what I got for you. LouHall.com. I hope it changed lives or at least inspire you to dream big. I'll be back.